Uh, we promise we're only going to take seven minutes before you get to go for, for coffee break. And today we're going to talk to you about, and with our last, latest innovation, uh, FeedsEye, real-time fraud detection using machine, learn, machine learning only based approach. Uh, I'm CEO and I've got here my VP of Sales, Nuno Pires. One of the things that, we, that what we've seen is users or consumers today, they do two things. They buy, they buy respective of channel, they don't buy online or offline. Uh, which is, we see some people saying, oh, it's an online only play or it's an offline play, uh, only play. What we see is consumers buy, regardless of channel, regardless, and they buy online, pick up in store, uh, and so on. We've also seen that consumers have a strong social presence today. So what we're announcing today is for fraud detection, what would be the value of having the combination of your social data that gives a lot of insight about you with what we're doing with some of our issuing banks or some of the networks that we work with. And it's a combination of data that the banks already have with um, the social uh, graphs that you leave as a consumer that really enables us to do our job to stop the bad guys while uh, with a very low false positive uh, really well. Today we're going to talk to you about Sara. Sara, and if we switch to the mobile uh, phone, she's, a, she's in San Francisco, she works for a fintech uh, company, and she is going to Finnovate Europe. And one of the things she's doing is she's in the airport SFO, and she's checking in, saying that I'm going to go to Finnovate, uh, which which she just did. So, as that app is connected uh, through the bank that uses our uh, technology in the background, we do know as a fraud engine that Sarah has checked in at the at the airport. But unfortunately, Sarah, that's just she was rushing through the through the security, she had a problem with her laptop. And it was the laptop that she was going to use to do her demo here. And it could be Sarah, it could also be Marcos uh, from PayPal, it also happened uh, the same story to him uh, just today. And she came, she was going on, on, on her way to London, but a uh, laptop, uh, she didn't have a laptop, she needed a new one. So on the flight, online, she goes to Carinco, an online retailer in the, here in the UK, she, uh, she buys a new laptop for in-store pickup uh, when she lands. Any other uh, fraud system out there, be it on the retailer side, on the merchant side, or on the issuing side, would have blocked this transaction because it's highly unlikely that someone coming from one country to another one, buying something mid-air to pick up in store, this has all the telltales from, from a fraudulent behavior, fraud, fraudulent uh, transaction. However, since we have Sarah's account in our, in our bank, and we can see in real time the data that she's feeding us. So as soon as she checks in into Facebook, we've actually seen that. So we see that a couple of minutes later, she's buying uh, something to, for in-store in pickup in London. We know it's her because she checked in uh, uh, in the SFO to fly to London. So the kind of stuff that we do uh, for, for, for Sarah is we really track her and we really know her, her behavior. So if we look at the transactions, why did we approve this, uh, this transaction? If we look at the transactions from Sarah, we actually see, and if we search for her, we can actually see the, the trail that she left uh, online. So we know that she did uh, a, a social check-in at the airport en route to London. We have that information. And we, know, we also know that when she went to buy uh, um, a laptop uh, using her, uh, her, her, her tablet, in the flight, she used her device ID that she belongs to her, and we also know that this matches to the transactions or to the profile that she typically has. So we're looking at her with what we call a granularity of one. We're really looking at Sarah as one consumer, and while she purchased something, while that authorization was going from that particular merchant, we did, uh, we did our stuff. Just a quick uh, overview how we do this behind the back. We do this by using uh, in this case, it's around 50, it can be thousands of parameters that we're tracking about any given consumer at any given time for fraudulent purposes. And we do it with a machine learning only approach. So there's no man in the, there's no one codifying these rules. There's no one looking at what kind of patterns that we're looking for. Is the machine learning that looks at this. And to give you just a glimpse of the kind of stuff that we do, uh, this is what we call the rock curve. So in the back, we have machine learning algos that they're always picking up new signals, always looking for signals with all the data that we're ingesting, social, uh, offline, and whatnot, 
that might indicate us what is fraud and what, what it's not. And this chart here shows you basically how good this particular model is at any, at any given, given, given point in time. But uh, if we go back uh, to Sarah and the kind of stuff we're collecting about her, we actually uh, have a pretty good idea that she will go back to the US. So, because we've tracked her, she did this trip uh, many times, and from the history that we have from Sarah, uh, we typically know that she comes to Finnovay, she spends a couple days here, and then she goes back to the US. So if we would have seen that from London, she didn't check in in any other country in Europe, and all of a sudden, we would see transactions in, let's say, Paris or Berlin or whatnot, that would probably be a fraudulent transaction because our system was telling us that based on all the history she had, she flew back to the United States and she probably checked in already at SFO on her way back. She said, I'm, land, I've landed, uh, I'm home. So that's the kind of stuff we're always doing as uh, something is being purchased. Just today, the CEO, Marcus Newman from uh, uh, PayPal, announced that using a very similar scheme, uh, his credit card was hacked here in the UK. He came here, a couple of days, all of a sudden his, his credit card was using on a spending spree. That would have not happened uh, with, with Addis issuing bank being using our, our technology. So to recap, uh, what we've shown you today is how do you make use of all these signals to augment the kind of fraud and the kind of tracking that we do on a one-to-one -one profiling basis? Uh, and that only works if we track consumers across channels, start offline, online, real time, um, uh, and so on. It also only works if you have what we do, which is a machine learning first approach, with no rules, and it has to be without men in the loop. There are just too many signals, too many patterns out there for you to be able to track uh, fraudulent behavior by, with human uh, interaction only. And that's FIDSA in a nutshell. Thank you. Thank you.